2018 was absolutely terrible in film, and let me tell you why. We get forgettable sequels, big budget movies that flopped hard in the box office. Even Disney had two big budget films that flopped hard and was easily forgettable. Hell, we somehow went back in time to the early 2000s to have someone think that talking dogs and kids movies still make money. Anyways, it's Razzie's time again, which is basically anti-Oscars for the worst movies. And here are some of my dishonorable mentions. This year we got The Happy Time Murders, a huge disappointment where it suffered like Sausage Party, where saying fuck and talking about sex because you're in a rated R movie makes you really cool! Uh, we got Batman Ninja, another hyped movie I had that turned out to be in a massive disappointment and just overall what the fuckery. And finally, Teen Titans Go to the movies where... Did you just mention Teen Titans Go? Because I'm the only one who makes money off of Teen Titans Go hate. Mister. Enter. Um, I, I just said it was a dishonorable mention. It, it, it's annoying, but Stan Lee was cool, and I'll admit, as annoying and pointless as some scenes were, there were, like, like a very little percentage of jokes that I liked, but it, the movie was crap anyways, but it, it's only a dishonorable mention. The real question is, what the fuck are you even doing in my house? Uh, fuck you. Okay, then. I guess here's my top five worst movies of 2018, I guess? Number five. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Speaking of disappointments, if Jurassic World copied off of Jurassic Park, then Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom took Jurassic Park 2 and Jurassic Park 3 and put them into a giant heap of trash. There are just a lot of goofy scenes in this. The dinosaurs are just basically flat out Looney Tunes, the plot twists are dumb, and Franklin is one of the most annoying characters in the franchise. I knew I should have stayed home today. The worst are those scenes that are supposed to be super emotional, like the dinosaurs dying in the volcano, never to be seen again. I except for the next scene where there's the dinosaurs on the ship, so all alive and well, so I, I guess it's not really that big of a deal. And of course, I gotta talk about the elephant in the room. The stupid ass ending. It looks like the characters are finally making the right decision when... I had to. They're alive. Like me. Yeah, and now people won't be alive like you because they're now dino meat. But hey, those dinosaurs were alive like you, so it's okay for them to live. Good reasoning. I guess if there's one thing I can say about Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, it's not as dumb as Jurassic Park 3. Number 4. Solo, a Star Wars story. How dare you! That's why I always shoot first. Anyways, yeah, Solo is number four on this list. If you like Solo, fine, but this was not my cup of tea. Although, if we're talking about Solo, I gotta fix the lighting here. There we go, much better! Right from the start, there was a lot of trouble during production that led to switching Lord and Miller to Ron Howard directing. And I don't blame Ron Howard for this movie, because he just got put on the spot in doing all these reshoots. 
No, instead, I blame Disney for its overuse of the franchise and trying to milk out as much as possible, and eventually this backfired so bad that they had to cancel the solo movies for Obi-Wan and Bubba Fett because of this mess. And it's easy to see why, with its poor relationships, bad lighting, Maul just coming in for fan service, and the unnecessary information, like how Solo got his name. Who are your people? I don't have people. I'm alone. Um. Solo. Wow, thanks for that very important information. I'm sure it's just as important as why Hogwarts has bathrooms, right, J.K. Rowling? This was just an overall disaster from the start, and it should have never been made. Even Mamma Mia 2 made more money in the box office. Maybe they should have just made it a musical. They already got a song for Han. Number 3 Truth or Dare Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. We have an official move on. That's right, an official move on to So Bad It's Good Movies. An official move on starting with Blumhouse's Truth or Dare. But yeah, this is just so bad it's good. With generic horror movie characters, deaths that are supposed to be scary but just end up goofy. And when they get possessed, it looks like a very bad Photoshop making us smile way too big. Not to mention the ending, where they decide to fuck everyone else in the world with a quick bait chainmail vid to get them all into the game, which in reality, no one would really follow. Kinda like that dead girl chainmail that came a few years back. Anyways, if the film was really supposed to end, it should have ended like this. So apparently we can challenge demons to their own game? Yes. And since I did two truth, you have to do a dare on me. So I guess in this case, I dare you to end this game and never play with anyone ever again. I guess that was easy. A lot better than how they went with it. I guess Blumhouse should be dared to accept the truth that this film is not that scary at all. Number 2 Slenderman Because creepypastas need movies too! <laughs> But seriously, who asked for a Slenderman movie? Were they preparing for a creepypasta cinematic universe? That's like a step worse than the dark universe. How do you even do that? And even if there was an internet horror based movie, it should be on the SCP Foundation. It's got much better material, and it definitely would be a lot more interesting than this shit. Terrible acting, overuse of the jump scare effect, dumb ending, and the fact that it's so bad that they had to use fan art and even showed sites that could clearly stated that he was a fictional character. I am not kidding, by the way, when there was an actual thread on the villain's wiki of a Sony employee asking for fan arts rights. I guess in all fairness, I do have to give props for Sony for giving creators consent first before putting them into the movie. Even though, I will say, this film did indeed suck. And let's hope we don't get a Jeff the Killer movie anytime soon. And the number one worst movie of 2018 is... Holmes and Watson. I have an old saying, the worst movies are comedies. With something like a horror, sci-fi, drama, western, whenever something bad happens, it's funny because it's unintentionally funny. With comedy movies, they try so hard to be funny that you just end up becoming miserable throughout the entire movie. And that is why comedies are usually ending up becoming the worst movies of all time. And Holmes and Watson definitely fits that description. 
I tell you guys, the film literally starts with a Hannah Montana quote of all things. How dated is that? And then it goes on with its gross out humor and modern things, but it in the past. Like how 1800s medicine is revolutionary, but it's actually bad. Or uh, selfie jokes, or five minutes of a Donald Trump joke. Two of them, to be precise. The twist you could see from a mile away, and it just overall leaves a bad taste in your mouth. It's no mystery why people literally walked out of the theater. Even Netflix! Netflix refused this shit! And they approved Death Note and a 60 million dollar green eggs and ham show! I repeat, 60 million dollars! This got approved, and Holmes and Watson didn't. That's how bad we are speaking, people! As of this recording, Holmes and Watson is nominated for one of the worst movies of the year for the Razzies, and I honestly think it deserves that. More than that, I honestly think this is the worst movie I have ever seen in my entire life, and I saw The Last Airbender, Smosh the Movie, The Emoji Movie, The Cat in the Hat, Disaster Movie, Epic Movie, etc, etc. This is honestly the worst movie I have ever seen. Well. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, if you watch the Razzies, I recommend taking a look at that. Otherwise, tune in tomorrow for the best movies of 2018, Top 5 Edition.